this story, but it normally is the one that sticks with everybody, so I'm going to tell it again. But I learned this the first week in the, the job at Toyota. I was sent to Japan to work on the line, right? And they wanted me to have empathy. They said, you're going to work on the line because we want you to have empathy for the team leaders and team members that you're going to come back and lead, even though group leaders don't work on the line. Have you work on the line for 30 days? And we're going to build Camrys over there and once a minute, but uh, don't expect to learn the whole job. So I remember going over to Japan thinking, how can I not learn a, a 60-second job in 30 days? They must not know us Americans very well. I'm going to show them. To end that story quick, they were right. I didn't learn the job in 30 days, but, uh, but I was dying trying. And so the first week, I was putting in fender liners on a Camry and shooting three screws, four bolts, three screws, four bolts, uh, one after another. And that was you know, about 10 seconds of the 60 seconds, but that was my first week's assignment. And uh, getting pretty quick uh, throughout the week, and then all of a sudden, uh, towards the end of the week, I'm popping those babies in, and I slipped. My air tool slipped, and I went out, and I scratched the fender of the car. It was a beautiful blue Camry, and I remember the white line right across the, and I'm thinking, shoot. But nobody saw me do it. <laughs> because I checked, right? I mean, it was like. <laughs> and the coast was clear. And so they taught me to do what if I have a problem? Pull the end on. So I had a decision to make. And my decision was, I'm not going to pull it. I don't want them to know I screwed up. I'm trying to show them that the Americans are, can do this, and plus, personally, I don't want them to know I messed up. I don't want to put my job in jeopardy. So then I started finishing the rest of the job, and all of a sudden my conscience started getting the better of me, and you know, HR had told me before I left you'd need to pull the end on, and when I got there, the team leaders, the group leaders, but I still wasn't convinced, and I was rationalizing, saying, well, it's not that bad of a scratch, you know? I mean, it, it looks bad from here, but it's the angle. I'm under the car, you know? And I mean, the car's on the ground. Who in the heck's going to be laying on the cement, you know, looking at that? I think it's going to be okay. And so on we go. Then uh, about ready to finish the car, and I'm like, oh, no, gosh. My, I'm starting getting paranoid, thinking, do they have hidden cameras up here somewhere? Or something, you know? and, and so I better go ahead and pull it. So I pull the hand on, and the team leader comes over, and he tags the scratch to go to the paint hospital. And then he stands by me to watch me, and he starts coaching me two, three, four cars, and he teaching me if I can put the, uh, my other hand to brace that air tool while I'm shooting, even if I slip, it'll stay in the fender well, and it won't go out into the fender. It's like, well, that's a good, that's good Kaizen. That's good problem solving, so I can do that. So the rest of the two-hour split, I did that, and no more scratches. So problem solved. I'm feeling good. And then every uh, morning, there's a five-minute shutdown for the team leaders to have a safety talk, and every afternoon, there's a five-minute shutdown for the group leaders to have a quality talk with their 20, 25 people. So all week long, I'm drinking my Coke, and you know, they're jabbering in Japanese, and on I go, and on they go, because I don't know Japanese. And so that day, I'm doing the same thing, drinking my Coke, and they're jabbering in Japanese, and all of a sudden, I hear Mike's son. And I look up, he's like, are you talking to me? And they weren't talking to me. They were talking about me, but they weren't talking to me. <laughs> so I start listening a little more, and then a little bit later, I hear a scratchy. <laughs> I go, I think I know what they're talking about. That translates pretty darn clearly, doesn't it? Uh, and I can't believe they're talking about that. I mean, what happened to the respect and trust deal that we were talking? I thought the team leader, I thought we had the problem solved. Now he's telling the whole group I screwed up. Thanks a lot, buddy. Now I, get, now I see how it really is. Now what are they going to do? So with that, they, uh, the bell get, turns, the bells and whistles go off to call everybody back to the line, and they start streaming back to the line, but they come right towards me, and they start shaking my hand and patting me on the back. And I'm thinking, what the heck is going on? Are they saying goodbye, or what is the... <laughs> so I'm trying to talk, I'm trying to figure it out, and uh, they get somebody to take my place, and they go get a translator. There was two or three of those in the plant for all of us, and so she comes over, talks to the group leader for a while. She comes back to me, and she says, Mike, son, they're wanting to thank you. I'm like, what? Thank me for scratching the car? No, they're wanting to thank you for letting them know you scratched the car. They said it was a kind of a little defect under there. It could have got past inspection and got to the customer. That would have been the worst case. The most likely case is the inspection would have found it, but then they would have had to take time and effort to track it back and find where it came from. And by you letting them know, neither of those happened, and that's what they're thanking you for. I'm like, wow. Some people say, well, did you go make more scratches then after that? <laughs> no, but what do you think I did the next time I had a problem? Pulled the end on. So do you have that culture in your organization? And what are we doing about it if you do not? <laughs>